Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Moon Walk Talk. All your energy into your finger. Throw it out. Fire. Welcome to another episode of Moonwalk Talks. My name is Jenkins, your host. I don't have anything fancy to say here this time because I just want to get right into it. Um, just got through watching the new movie, Michael Jackson, Searching for Neverland. Um, I'm here with my buddy Fern. Fern, how you doing? All right, man. Now, normally whenever I do these episodes and I have somebody come in, um, they're normally, they, they, they're, they're kind of MJ fans, but not really like big MJ fans. And, uh, but Fern, you're actually a really big MJ fan. Uh, I'm really huge. Been listening to him since 1984. Yeah. I mean, I've got him tattooed on my chest. Yeah. You know, it's a pretty big deal. And if you guys hear anything crazy right now, we're at my, uh, new house. I just moved like yesterday and, uh, it's really hot in here. Because for some reason the AC is not working, and then two, my bunny is over there losing his mind. I don't know why all of a sudden he thought he was gonna start doing it now. Uh, so hopefully, uh, well, hopefully you guys do hear it because that's funny. Anyway, normally our episodes, you know, we've been doing more structured episodes, but I thought it would be fun <coughs> to just do another, just a random one, and talk about this new movie. So I guess before we get into it, I always ask everybody when they come on the podcast, um, even though I'm really excited to talk about this movie. Um, Fern, what is your first MJ memory? Oh man, far back from I can remember, uh, 1984, 1985, uh, when MTV first started, you know, we had cable and the little black boxes or brown boxes where you had to move the, the little dial and flip the switches mm -hmm. to, to get to the movie channel. I would stay up all night and have it on MTV just to watch the thriller video. Mm. My mom would come, you know, three or four o'clock in the morning. I'd be passed out on the couch and she'll be watching me. Uh -huh. And as soon as, you know, the first intro song to or the first beat to thriller would come on and I would jump up and just do all the dance moves like, oh yeah i know all the dance moves i'm not gonna show you but, yeah. <laughs> well the podcast audience couldn't see it anyway so um also the next question i normally ask is if you can can you tell me your favorite michael jackson song man in the mirror man in the mirror man in the mirror hey, that's a good one can't beat that one i mean all right so um i know normally on these episodes i'm like oh yeah i'm jenkins follow moonwalk talks at moonwalktalks.com <laughs> I'm just too excited to really just start talking about this movie. So we're just going to get into it. I'll put all that plug stuff at the end. All right. So Searching for Neverland. It's a lifetime movie based off of the book Remember the Time uh, by Michael Jackson's bodyguards at that time. Uh, I'm pretty sure his name was Bill. There was Bill. God, I forget his last name. And then uh, Jamie and Beard. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of... Uh, fact checking normally on these episodes i script them so this one's kind of just going by the cuff um yeah bill whitfield and J uh, javon beard sorry um it, it was a book written by them about uh the couple of years that they took care of michael jackson it was right after the uh 2005 allegations and he was acquitted and yeah, the, the book is about their time with Michael. And I personally have read the book. You have not read the book. I've, uh, no, I've never read the book. I, I, it was a bestseller, but uh, looking at Twitter, I don't think a lot of people read the book. Um, you know, I really personally enjoyed the book, um, but that's not... That, that's We'll talk about that here in a second. I'm curious to know, did you like the movie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, there were some points that I really liked it. Uh -huh. I did not like the actor playing Michael Jackson. Okay. Um, what's his name? Navi. Navi, yeah. He, um, for one, he's Asian. He's got that accent. Uh huh. And that's one of my big th keys, man. If if you're gonna portray Michael Jackson, you gotta have the voice down. Mm -hmm. And he just didn't have the voice down, and that just bugged me throughout the whole entire movie. So, 
so we'll we'll get to Navi here in a second. But I as agree. far as like as far as like the story, the movie, I'm like like all in all is like, did you enjoy it or not? Oh, I enjoyed it. Yes. You did enjoy it. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But th- you're just saying like the main thing that bugged you was was Navi. Was, yeah. I just I don't I always forget how to say is it Navi is it Navi I don't know I think it's I, Navi. I, I, I'm gonna say Navi. Okay. Yeah. Um. My take. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the movie. I don't. <laughs> as far as some of the biopics go. Um, I've seen a bunch of them too. They're and, pretty terrible. Most yeah. of them. I mean, like, of course, we all go back to the uh, what's what's that guy's name? Flex. Um, uh, the Flex from from that Man in the Mirror movie that was just awful. Flex Alexander, I think his name was. Um, yeah, and he was just oh God. It was just so bad. Like that one is just like the bottom of the barrel. Um, and so I guess I guess comparing it to that, it, it's it, it's a lot better. Um, and then there is, I mean, of course, nothing's going to beat the Jacksons. Oh, yeah. The American Dream. You can never beat that one. Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at pictures right now from the Man in the Mirror, the the Michael Jackson story. Flex Alexander. Yeah. Yes. And and it's laughable. It is. It is. It is laughable. Yeah. I mean, the guy that's playing Michael Jackson looks like he has a mustache. <laughs> I mean, yeah yeah it's, it's, and there's it's just the makeup me. like the pale white makeup he did anyway well most of the fans know how terrible that is um so you did enjoy the movie i enjoyed the movie i liked it a lot better than most of the uh biopics um so yeah let, let, let's start with navi okay so you did not like his accent no i know i didn't no. so did you like it i mean was there any redeeming qualities i mean like, like give me kind of a roundabout idea of what you thought about navi as michael jackson i didn't i didn't like any part of Zero? him no no the the makeup was done poorly mm-hmm. uh his voice i mean the way he moved you know michael jackson had that that certain way about how he would talk and how he would move you know uh-huh. and, and and show off his dance moves it's just to me he didn't get it right okay all right um i guess for the counterpoint i really like navi <laughs> i really i i i will say the accent because i he i don't know if he's british i mean i guess i could look that up uh i mean but- he looks asian yeah, I think he. Let me look him up real quick. But I don't. I didn't know much about Navi before hearing that he was going to be in this movie. So, you know, I. You know, normally I do a lot of research on these people, but um, I kind of wanted to go into it not knowing much about him. Um, so that way I could just kind of see him as Michael Jackson. So I don't. I'm really not too sure about his origins. All I know is that I know that he worked for Michael Jackson before. Um, I know that he, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was employed by Michael Jackson as a decoy for a while. And I know that Michael Jackson has praised him as one of the better, uh, Michael Jackson impersonators. Um, but as far as uh, he's never been an actor before, um, I really enjoyed his acting. I think he did a fantastic job as an actor Uh, because for one, I guess, you know, Seeing him as, I mean, uh, knowing that he wasn't an actor beforehand um, actually made it a little bit, I, I guess I guess it gave him more of a buffer. I don't know. Maybe I'm being a little nice to him, but I, I, I thought he was great at acting. The only thing that, that did, well, there was two things that killed me. One, you're right, the accent. I, I, I hear, I could hear him doing like British tones as like, and he would say like car instead of car, you know? Well, at one point I thought he was Hispanic. Really, like in the very beginning, he had a, like a little bit of a Hispanic accent. Yeah, and then the other thing that really bothered me a lot was the dancing. Like he was a stiff, like like I heard that he was one of like the best Michael Jackson impersonators, and like he did not have the moves down, did not have a single move down at all. Yeah, like I, man, it's like that was kind of to me like the 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 voice didn't really bother me too much. I, I would catch him like doing it wrong every once in a while, but I don't know. It's like, I guess it wasn't as cartoony as some of the ones that I've heard, you know, cause some people get uh, like, they just over exaggerate it. And, um, I don't think his was that bad in my opinion, but the, definitely the British overtones, um, some of the lisps 
were kind of uh, kind of exaggerated. But in my opinion, all in all, it wasn't as bad as I mean, I, I guess it's kind of bad to like sit there and be like, well, it's not as bad as others, you know, but I don't know. <laughs> I mean, but you you've seen some of the others. Yeah, as like it it, it sucks that I, that I'm having to say like, oh well, it's not as bad as this one. But I mean, there's there's no good comparison in yeah. any of the biopics that's it, out there. Does this dude just not have a Wikipedia page or something? Because I'm like, <laughs> all I'm finding is E Online. Oh yeah, Navi Michael Jackson Wiki. Why is it not? Why does it not pull up? Yeah, I don't know. I guess I should probably know more about him, but, you know, I can't know everything. <laughs> um, Excuse me. Let's see. Navi, Navi, Navi. Oh, I mean, he was, he's, he's got an official website. He was born in Trinidad. He's been impersonating Michael Jackson for 28 years. Uh, yeah, I, do, I did know that he worked as a decoy for Michael uh, for some years. Um. Anyway, but yeah, I guess back to the opinions. I just, I really, I really enjoyed his acting. I think that out of all the people I've seen play Michael Jackson, well, my favorite. We'll get to that later. But um, I think that they, for later years, Michael, I think he did a good job, in my opinion. And that's just me. You know, that's just me. No. <laughs> me, me and the wife went to Branson, Missouri, just because they were doing a one sh- a one night only show uh-huh. of MJ Live. It was an impersonator coming in from Vegas. Okay. Now this guy, he had the moves down, and I got to meet him afterwards. He had the voice down. He had the look down. And do you remember what his name was at all? No. No. I know there's a couple of people from MJ Live. They, they've kind of cycled him in and out. I know. Um, God, Ernest was one of them. I forget that guy's last name. Uh, James Times, which I, I saw at um, the Who's Bad tribute, was one of them. Um, I don't remember the last guy I saw. I think this. I think the guy you're talking about was the because I, I saw him at MJ Live as well. I wish I remembered his name. Um, but the the thing about those impersonators versus Navi is that Navi to me resembled him better i guess it's one of those things like seeing is believing because to me navi kind of resembled him a bit more than the guys that do the tributes because i mean navi's had plastic surgery to look like him um i mean i guess that works better for me is like seeing that he kind of like resembled mj more than these guys because like i've seen these guys like close up and you can see the makeup, like, real bad. It's like, you can just tell where they've contoured their nose and their cheeks and everything. And, and um, yeah, that's that's for the glove. <laughs> my wife just came in and brought in my, this, 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 uh, this uh, t- tub of... Tub. Uh, <laughs> sequins. Of sequins, yeah, that I, I, I was using to make a glove. Anyway, um, yeah, to me, he, he kind of, he looked, he resembled Michael to me. It's like, and, you know... Uh, I've seen Michael a lot, and of course, you know, it's, he's, nobody's ever gonna look exactly like him. They're just not. It's like, uh, what's? There's just no way to do it. There's just no way. It's like, but to me, he looked, he looked a lot like him to me. So, I don't think so. I think they got think the so? chin. I, I think they got the chin wrong. <sighs> it looked too square. Yeah, it was I don't know. just a lot of Botox yeah. <laughs> injections in his chin. That's what it looked like. The right? only thing that bugged me a lot was his lips. They always look chapped yeah. the entire time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just chapped. Do. And it's like, why couldn't they fix that? Um, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's like, it didn't bug me as much like, as I guess. Um, because I want to believe that it's, you know, that it's Michael or, you know, that, like when I, whenever I go see like, uh, Michael Jackson one, or I'll go see, you know, some of the tribute artists. It's like, I, I will go in it being like, you know what? I'm just going to kind of enjoy this. It's like, I'm just kind of going to kind of let it go. There's very few instances where I just get really pissed off at, you know, I mean, a certain thing. I cried when I went to go see MJ live. MJ live. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was, you know, the, the show they, the, in Branson. Uh huh. I mean, I was that big of a fan. Like when he did die, Uh huh. I came home from lunch on a break and I could not return to work because I was crying so bad. Yeah. But it, I don't know. It's just with the with the impersonators. I I mean, if they if, going into it, you know, 
going in going into it, I want to believe that I'm seeing Michael Jackson. Yeah, and so just so he, just because there's there's no way mm-hmm. that I'll ever be able to see him. Yeah, you know, unless I go watch the dangerous. Yeah, you know, or if we figure out how to make a time machine, and then you know, go back to bad era. <laughs> yes, and then yes. rob somebody from that time and get Michael Jackson tickets. You know, right. yeah. Is yeah. It- <laughs> I'm totally down. <laughs> okay, so you're you're a no on Navi. No, no, not at all. No, no. no I'm no, a yes no. on Navi. So take it as you will, you MJ lovers, because I'm sure they're all gonna crucify me for that one. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna listen to Moonwalk Talks anymore because uh, he likes Navi. So what about the other actors? I mean, there was uh, the guy that played Bill. He is he's originally I know him from The Walking Dead. Do you watch The Walking Dead? No. Okay. Well, he he was he had a really uh, cool part on The Walking Dead. Let me find his name. Yeah, but how long did he last? Uh, well, uh, not long because as ev- <laughs> as Walking Dead fans know, there can only be a couple of black people on there at a time, and he was one of the black people, and so um, they offed him as soon as a new white uh, black person came on. Um, yeah, his name is Chad L. Coleman. I thought he was fantastic as Bill. What do you think? I think he did a really good job. Yeah, I think he did. True, I believe it. I mean, uh, I mean, I guess there's not much to say. I mean, he was he, he played the, the the part solid. As like he did a good job. Uh, you know, you, you believed him as that character. Um, I mean, yeah, I can't really can't really hate on him too much. I mean, was there anybody in the cast? I mean, the guy that played uh, Javon Beard, his name is Sam Ad. I don't know. Uh, Adagoki, Adagoki, A D E G O K E. I I don't know. Um, was there anybody aside from Navi that you just kind of like, eh? Yeah, the, the the chick that played his manager. Oh, um, you're talking about her name is uh, Bain, uh, Ramon Bain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's played by Holly Robinson Pete. Um, and we were sitting there like, as soon as it started, we're like, who? Where is she from? Where is she from? We know her, and uh, I I recognize her from. Uh, hanging with Mr. Cooper. I think that's... I think that's the big thing. I think that's the one. I mean, yeah. she, she's done other stuff. She was on the new 21 Jump Street movie. Is she? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure she had a, you know... A, she had a, she wasn't, a, wasn't a, you know, major role in it, but it, she was on there. Uh, I mean, but that's where I know her from. But she she was instantly recognizable. Um, but yeah, I mean, I read the book, so... To me, she had a she had a bigger part in the book, and that that that'll just go back to the book versus the movie, and we'll get to that as well. Um, I guess we'll stick to the actors. Um, I think all the kids did really well too. Yeah, kids were great. I I, I just don't. There wasn't anybody to me that was just too uh, too terrible. Really? What no, you, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see anybody except for Navi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one in the the most key, the, <laughs> the most key, key person. Player. Yeah, I was like ruining it. it just, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah. Text, I, guess. I was texting my wife through the movie. I'm like, God, this guy is just horrible. <laughs> and she's at home watching it too. And I'm, and she's like, Yeah, you listen to his voice. I'm like, Yeah. Um, she, she gets it. Yeah. The voice. The voice to me is like I didn't know even notice it at first. It's like at first I was kind of like in it, and I was like I didn't notice him like with the accent. I don't know. It's like to me, it wasn't that bad. But then all of a sudden, like later on in the movie, I'm like, oh man, this is his, like, his accent's really bad. And the, I, I noticed it right off the bat in the beginning, yeah. You know, because you know, I've I've seen numerous tons of interviews with mm-hmm. Michael Jackson, yeah. And then plus all the biopics, and everybody tries to get close to his voice as they can, yeah. He didn't try, dude. I think he did try though. He, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think he tried. I just think that his natural accent. Of what, wherever he's, I mean Trinidad. Uh, I don't know how it's, long it's, he was down I there. Think, but. I think it was more of the pitch of his voice. Uh-huh. You know, Michael Jackson kind of had like a little bit of a high pitch. Yeah. And this, I guy, think his, I don't this, know. This, this guy I, just didn't try. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm having to disagree. That's like I, just, I think, I think, I think the pitch was good. It's like I don't think it was. Uh, anyway, we already talked about it. <laughs> we're good, okay, let's let's go to the. Okay, so none of the, okay. I, all of us were kind of like, yeah, the actors were good. I mean, you know. Uh, I, I had no problem with them. It's like the guys that played Bill um, and Javon were great. Um, everybody, uh, to me, uh, yeah, I think we're we're, we're pretty decent. Um, let's see. So, as far as the movie goes, um, I came into it as a fan of the book. 
I really did enjoy that book. Um, I man, I, I remember when I when I had bought it. I think I'd got it on my on like a not like Audible, but what was that? What's the other one? Um, I don't know. I got it. I got it to to where I could read it on my phone, and I just sat in bed one day and just read the entire book. Like, cause it was just like to me, it was it was really neat learning about that time of Michael Jackson's life. Um, because it was, in a way, it was a time where nobody cared about what mm-hmm. Michael Jackson was doing because it was right after the trial. Everybody was kind of harped on that. Everybody thought he was going to jail, you know? No, I knew he wasn't. Yeah. Well, you know, the media, you know, the, yeah. all, all the, all the a-holes out there thought that Michael Jackson was going to go to jail because people thought he was guilty, you know, especially getting accused for the second time. And so after that, nobody really cared about, I mean, it, from that's what I saw reading the yeah. book was that, and that, in that point, um, from the years that they, the, the, the two or three years that they were with him, that people like they they cared to see Michael Jackson, but they weren't really too worried about what he was doing. Um, and not not just regular people like me and you, but like even the celebrities. Yeah, you saw like nobody cared. Uh, yeah, at one point nobody even cared to call him. Yeah, and so I always thought it was interesting because who knows that story? You know, the only people that know that story are the two guys that were there with him, his children, and Michael. And of course, the people that would pop in and out every once in a while, um, and you know, and those names. Uh, reading a bunch of the different books, like MJ Inc., or reading like uh, My Friend Michael with uh, Frank Cassio, um, you hear about these people that pop in and out. And the thing that's that's always troubling about with these movies, with these books, is that you just don't know what's real. You just don't. You don't know what's true. It's like, and as much as I want to believe that this is true, which I, and a, a part of me does, I actually do believe that the bodyguards are telling the truth. I don't think that they... I'm sure some parts are fabricated. Um, but I, all in all, I believe that it's a real... I think that these events transpired. What do you think? I think so. It, it, it seems real genuine. Mm-hmm. It... it it seems like something Michael would go through. Yeah. Being, you know, just how everybody just turned their backs on him. Mm -hmm. The, the part that kind of has me off a little bit is about him being broke. Okay. Well, and that's, that's what I want to talk to you about because I know that I was, because I, while I was watching the movie, I was reading the Twitter comments. And of course there's a lot of hate for this movie. (laughs) There's a lot of hate for this movie. And, um, I think the 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 problem is is that just like most movies that are centered around Michael Jackson's life, one, there's not a budget. There's just never enough budget, mm-hmm. and two, there's never enough time. And uh, most movies that are going to deal with superstars' life, both of those things are going to be a problem, and and especially with Michael's because you just can't recreate Michael's life. You just can't. It's like it's just it's going to be impossible. Um, so with this one, it's going to skim, it skimped a lot on, on the timeline. Like as far as the book compared to the movie, um, it missed a lot of marks and, uh, I wish it would have delved deeper into some of those issues. And so that way people could understand it better because I think a lot of the people that were hating on it on Twitter didn't read the book or didn't know what was going on in the book. And so I enjoyed the movie a lot more because I knew I, I could fill in the gaps from my experience reading the book. But, you know, other people that like yourself that may not have gotten a lot of it um, was because, you know, it didn't fill in those gaps. Like people were like, why are these people mad at him? It was like, oh, well, because right. Michael Jackson, he didn't have money at that time. Uh, he was so much in debt. Like there was there was one scene that I wish that they would have kept in. Like, one, well, they, they kind of had that scene where he was, you know, not getting he, he couldn't afford the Christmas gifts. Yeah. Or whatever. But there was another scene which I wish they would have um, put in, which which is one of the like funniest things that I've heard, you know, from the world of Michael Jackson was at one point he wanted to get a new iPhone. And um, so they went to the they went to the Verizon or at and I don't remember that much. It was it was one of those two. And uh, the guys had to go in with his credit card, with his information, because, of course, Michael Jackson couldn't go in there. And uh, he was denied because his credit was so bad. And so one of the guys actually had to pay for it. One of the bodyguards, uh, Bill or Javon, had to pay for it because Michael Jackson's credit was so bad and he had no money, but he won an iPhone. And so that was another thing that was like leading up to the fact that they were so angry at him. And they didn't even show how angry they got at Michael. Like in the book, like they were like 
really frustrated because to them, they didn't realize that Michael was broke. They didn't realize that Michael is like, cause he was just going around like, like at that Christmas thing, just spending, just spending money. money like crazy. Yeah, it's like he was spending other people's money. Like, like you read like books like, like MJ Inc. And like it, 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 it details how poor he was. Like he was spending money. He did not have, he was, he would just go further, further into debt because Michael Jackson was used to having money. He knew that at any point, all he had to do is say, let me jump on a stage real quick. Let me get that next, next, next couple million, you know? Um, but at that point, you know, uh, it, it didn't, it, the movie didn't explain a lot of things like that. So people that were watching it were probably kind of clueless, you know, like, I mean, do you feel like that might've been a thing or, I mean, if if it would have delved deeper into why he was broke, yeah, then then yeah, I can I can see that. But from your perspective, how did it seem to you as far as um, a person that hasn't read the book? Do you feel it was? Do you feel it? It told a a, a whole a whole story, or was it no, choppy? And I it was it was choppy. I mean, I could tell. I mean, there was one point where he had money because at at the beginning, the bodyguards were getting paid, mm-hmm. and then. You know, four months later, four or five months later, they get half of what they're supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, and that's, that's another thing is that they didn't, they, I, I just wish that they would have, to, I mean, told the story better. If they, if they could have told that story better, I know it's, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it seems like, like such an easy thing to do. Just tell the story the right way. But again, there's, there just wasn't enough. They don't, they never give it enough time. And like I, I wrote down in my notes that they had wasted time on scenes that they didn't need, that they could have been <laughs> explaining what was going on. Like Joe Jackson showing up. Well, that one was actually like to me a good scene to kind of show that his family are crazy people. I um, mean, everybody knows Joe Jackson's crazy. Yeah. I mean, if they saw American Dream. Anyways. True. I, I I think that the okay. What do you what do you feel the movie did did right? <laughs> and the silence <laughs> explains it all. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they didn't they didn't tell the complete story. Yeah. You know, some parts were kind of hard to follow only because like I said, you don't know why he went broke. Yeah. You know, he's got he's got, you know, his his catalog. He's yeah. got, you know, the other catalogs that he owns. I think I think a lot of people going into it just casual fans and that's what i kind of because i was kind of reading through twitter a lot of people really hated on it because yeah they just didn't understand what's going on a a casual mj fan you know that just knows you know beat it thriller you know it's like they kind of know the the catalog but they don't they 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 couldn't tell you michael jackson's you know middle name you know it's like people that just know who know of him and they come to watch this movie um it's not doing it justice because they're gonna sit there and be like well, he he sold Thriller though. It's like you know, I mean, it, it, he he made Thriller. He has billions of dollars. It's like so they're not gonna understand that he was broke and why he was broke. So of course they're gonna you know go into recourse like, well, what does that mean? Because Michael Jackson he had lots of money. What are you talking about? Why can he afford sixty five thousand dollars worth of, or thirty five thousand dollars of, of uh, Christmas gifts? You know, right? Um, so yeah, those are things like that they could have explained better. Um, but again, it's like it goes back to. The book does explain it very well. The movie just doesn't. Um, at it. Yeah. The, yeah. Who, who directed this movie? Oh, I have no clue. I guess we could IMDb it. I guess. <laughs> Let's see. Directed by uh, Diane Houston. Let's see what else she's done. Just stay away from MJ movies. <laughs> uh, looks like she's done Take the Lead. No, she was a writer for that. Um... Uh, Let's see, director, uh, director. Okay, so so far she just has a bunch of upcoming stuff. Oh wait, no. So this is her first film. Oh wait, no, she's done lots of TV series, soul food TV series, TV series, TV series, and they're all canceled. Yep, Crossing Jordan. Oh, oh, she only directed one episode of that. One episode, one episode. Okay, so she's it's, only directed one episode of like four different TV series. No wonder it was so one. choppy. Yeah, it's like to me, like I don't think the directing was bad. I think the the pacing to me is like the pacing was the worst part to me. It did not convey what it needed to convey. 
And normally when these movies need to come out, it needs... To, and I know, I know a lot of the fans feel this way. It needs to paint Michael Jackson in a better light because a lot mm-hmm. of people going into this are going to think, of course, Michael Jackson, the child mol- uh, molestation allegations, they're going to think Michael Jackson... Uh, the wacko jacko. Yeah, the weirdo. And I mean, to me, I think that this one did portray Michael in a good way. I don't think that it made him seem like a crazy person. I don't. I, I liked. I liked the movie uh-huh. in the sense where it made Michael Jackson. I mean, look like a real person going through real True. troubles. I mean, like, yeah, you know, he's broke. Yeah, you know, how many how many celebrities that high in fame do you know that he's broke? Yeah, besides MC Hammer. Yeah, was well, he? Yeah, one of these episodes is like I could go into it now of why he was broke, but. Most of most of the fan community, like the hardcore fans, know why. Um, and it's just it's one of those episodes that I have to like get into all the facts, details, dates, times, why. It, it it pretty much came down to the fact that he was spending too much and not making enough because he didn't work for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't doing shows. He wasn't selling albums, and he wasn't writing music. So. Um, he was spending more than he was making and he thought that he always had an endless supply of money. And that's another thing they did. They did. They didn't say was why did he keep those gone with the wind statues? The reason why he kept them and it explains in the book is because they were worth money. Like they were worth, I think each of them were worth at least 1.5 million each. He had two of them. Mm-hmm. And so he always kept them in that case. So that way, if anything were to happen to him, no matter what he could get rid of them real quick, get some quick cash and dip. And so that way he would always have enough money to take care of his family. Um, and that's the reason why he kept him. But they didn't say that in the movie, you know? No, <laughs> so, no. And it's like, that's why he had that case of cash. Because he knew that no matter if he didn't have credit or his credit cards wouldn't work, he'd always have cash to fall back on. Um, but yeah, these are these things like that that they didn't explain in the movie, which I wish they would have. And that's why I probably that's why I want to talk about the difference between reading the book and not reading the book is that I enjoyed the movie a lot more because I kind of knew what things were going for. Right. It, it's like if you, I mean... If you go to a Harry Potter movie, is that you can? Well, I guess it's different because you can enjoy a Harry Potter movie without reading the book. But you're gonna enjoy, enjoy it more, more if yeah. you know who you know the behind the scenes characters and like, oh, and that Twilight. person showed up. And Twilight, yeah. Twilight. Oh, it's Twilight. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that was that was my <clears throat> major complaint about the movie was that. It did not explain the book the way that it should have. Because the book is so good. Like, there's a few books that I'm like, I really, really enjoy. That was one of them. I thought was just so neat. But, yeah. I Sorry, See, I feel now, like I'm talking now, way now, too much. <laughs> no, no, no. Now I'm going to have to go out and, you know. You should read the read book. Read the book. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to read the book, but, you know. All right. Um, so, after I'm done harping on that. Dude, you can cut me off at any moment. Because I will just start <laughs> yakking, okay? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that was my my yeah that was my thing going in was that I was really hoping that it would stay faithful to the book and in ways it did, but it didn't explain it enough and that was just because of the time you know it's like they just didn't have enough money or, or enough time, um and but the moments that it did stick to the book it got the book completely right like it literally like it was taking the book maybe way too literally um it did it did stick into the book a lot so um let's see as far as notes go this one this next one says. Uh, I, I'll have to actually double check that one because the Jehovah's Witness thing—they kind of stuck into that a lot. Did you have notes about that? Yeah, yeah. My, well, see, there was one point in time where he left Jehovah's Witness, yeah. and became Christian. Mm-hmm. They did a TV special about it, Oprah and Michael Jackson's first Christmas. Yeah, and then now they're saying that he's a Jehovah's Witness, but his mother. Had brought gifts, Christmas presents, yeah, for the kids, yeah, and she was a diehard Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witness, yeah, and and from from what I've read in different areas was that Michael had quit practicing a while because Je- like I've explained this before, I used to be a Jehovah's Witness when I was a kid, so I know that you have a thing, you're fellowshiped or disfellowshipped. Um, when you get disfellowshipped. You can't be part of the Jehovah's Witnesses anymore. You, I mean, you, you can practice their, their rituals if you want to because nobody can stop you. It's freedom of religion. Right. But they don't consider you part of it. Now, after Michael Jackson, I think it was, God, I, there, I can't remember exactly what year it was, but he got disfellowshipped, uh, I think it was after Bad. 
Um, and they wanted nothing to do with him. And right. so, and I remember at a point that he had, yeah, he had stopped practicing in the ways of Jehovah's Witnesses. And I thought it was funny that they kept bringing that up. But there was one other thing that they kept bringing up <laughs> that I thought was freaking hilarious. The hot the sauce. Hot sauce. <laughs> yeah. I think I pointed it out to you like five times. Yeah. It's like when they, when they had first brought it out for the movie theater scene, I remember that part of the book because it was just, it was so funny to me um, that they were talking about like no matter where he always went, always had hot sauce. It was like he, like he, he, he would rent out a theater so that he could go watch a movie and they'd have to bring hot sauce. Like they'd have to have hot sauce with them at all times but man they kept bringing it back didn't they yeah yeah <laughs> at least at least 10 times oh I man mean, i mean when they were packing up the house yeah the the first thing they were packing up was the hot sauce yeah you see them like but like there was a shot of them putting the hot sauce into a box i'm yeah. like dude yeah that's comedy and then yeah even when he was with the casios it was like oh you putting hot sauce on spaghetti <laughs> it's like what it's like what is this running gag with the hot sauce like in the book i don't even remember them talking that much about the hot sauce it's like i remember i remember the scene for the with the with the popcorn but man yeah and i remember they saying they loved hot sauce or whatever but yeah dude that that, that was really funny kind of yeah um oh yeah another thing i thought was uh, my next note was i like how they were authentic to michael jackson's entrances yeah, like most of the time, whenever I'm sure you know, you've heard the stories about when people say they they met Michael Jackson, it was like it was either a magical moment or he would surprise them in some way. And so yeah. every, both the times that the that the bodyguards met Michael Jackson, he was one magical entrance, second surprise, surprise. So yeah. I was like, that's pretty cool. I, I thought I thought that was pretty cool how he you know the the second time that he met the the bodyguard. Yeah, he was like all super excited, and all of a sudden he's like, pop, there he yeah. is. <laughs> Him dressed up like a pimp. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do you have any, what, like, what, what do you got for your notes as far as, like, things you like? Let's, let's keep going with things that we did like about it. The things that, well, hold on. Let me. Do you have do, like. do you have any notes in there? But, or we can just go to straight things that you don't like. I mean, like, no. I loved that, they, you know, like, like his in- interests. Yeah. Like he loved Charlie Chaplin. Yep. They showed that in they the, got the, that the in movie there. theater scene. Um, he loved "My Prerogative" by Bobby Brown. He did like that song. No, yeah. That, let's talk about that a little bit <laughs> because <laughs> that's, that's what how you said earlier. That's where his inner black came out. Yeah, yeah. The, the, well, there was a lot of them because you know, like the hot sauce yeah, is well, like yeah. the uh, and also the no credit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the, a black joke. You know, I mean, like. You've seen him in the back seat. Yeah, he was yeah. eating a chicken leg. Oh, yeah, yeah. He loved fried chicken. Fried and what, what's chicken, so funny is that because people were always talking about, like, well, it, it was, you know, rumor that he was vegetarian. But, no, you know. I don't see that. No, he wasn't. It's was like he loved fried chicken so much. Like he lo- And his favorite was Kentucky fried chicken. Yeah. And um, anyway, but yeah, back to my prerogative. Um, I was doing research while that was playing because they played it twice. And I do remember at one point hearing that he wanted it might have been from the book actually that he wanted to cover that song there was a couple of songs that he really enjoyed because after invincible came out they were planning on maybe doing a cover album because you know they're like uh you know invincible didn't do so well and so like maybe a cover album would be do would be good which would have been a terrible idea but i don't uh, know i don't know i would have liked to hear mj do my prerogative yeah i mean we kind of did on that movie you don't think that was navi yeah (laughs) I think I think it sounded okay. It's like in a way, you know, in a weird kind of you know blurry eared way. You know, <laughs> I didn't think it sounded that bad. Some of the woos and he's were a little bit too I much, did. but I, I thought my ears were bleeding. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think you resonate with most of the fans. I, th- I think I think I really do believe I that think, most. I of think them. you're like the one percent. I think I am. I think I'm the one percent of people that really enjoyed this movie. Well, I wouldn't say really enjoyed. I enjoyed it. Though. I mean, I enjoyed it. Yeah. It, was, it was a good movie. But as far as Navi's concerned, but yeah. as far as Navi, yeah, you're you're, you're completely anti. I'm, and I'm like, I'm, I'm kind an, of on board with Navi. So I'm anti Navi. <laughs> We're gonna have a sanction between the the fans. It's like they're like we're with Fern. It's like down with Jenkins, and there's gonna be like ten of me. You know, like with like you're looking at the new host. Yeah, exactly. Talks. They're gonna be like, can we just get rid of you know Jenkins? He's kind of like, eh, you know. Uh, they're like stick to the scripted episodes, you moron. Anyway, um, yeah. So my my prerogative. I was looking around because first off, I was like, it's kind of interesting because I remember that part from the book, but I was I would think about like why would they include that so often but i forget that lifetime also did 
the new edition movie, right? Was it? New, oh no, was that BET? That, that was did. BET. But, but right they, before they played this movie, was the Whitney, Whitney movie. Houston. So I think that they probably had the licensing mm-hmm. for Bobby Brown's music because they did. As, if you guys don't out there don't know, which I'm sure you do, the MJ estate wanted nothing to do with this movie. So n- Michael Jackson's family wanted nothing to do with it. Um, the estate, uh, the My Jack catalog. Nothing to do with this movie. So they cannot include any Michael Jackson music in this movie. So that's why they had Smile, because they can get the licensing for that, because it's more of a, you know, it's pretty open. They can get the licensing for uh, My Prerogative, because it's owned by MCA. But what was that song that we heard? I don't know. I am so confused on what that song was. I tried to Shazam it, and it it wouldn't pop up. Yeah, so for those wondering, that song that was... Sung by Navi. It was sung Navi. Navi. I'm pretty sure that was Navi singing. Um, it, I don't know what that song was. I really don't. It's like, I don't, I, I, I don't even know where to start. It's like, that song didn't sound familiar to me at all. No, me neither. It sounds like, a, you know, it sounds like a song that could have possibly been chosen to be like on, on uh, Escape, you know? On, uh, it could have, it sounded like a song that might have been in the vault somewhere, but I don't know. But it, it could have so. just been a cover of somebody else's song because I don't think they get I think, permission I think they just asked anti-navi to write a song yeah <laughs> for this little part and it was horrible i didn't like the song yeah i don't know i i i couldn't i have to listen to the song a couple more times i couldn't even like because the way that we were watching it we had to watch it through because i don't know i don't have cable so i had to like do it through sling tv and my and my into my tv and then do it through a speaker that i own like one of my dj speakers and so uh so i had a hard time discerning some of the lyrics from the song to even look up what the lyrics were so i'll have to go back and listen to it again and try to figure out where that freaking i'll song go home on from. a normal tv and try to yeah <laughs> and then it. get some normal sound coming out normal, of it normal quality sound the thing uh, about my prerogative that i'd written down uh yeah they were loving the fact of my prerogative being used because it was probably one of the only licensed song they used um but yeah it's actually owned by mca universal i was i was thinking i was like well maybe it was part of the atv catalog but it's not it's not it's, it's part of the mca universal um so they could license it um and the funny thing that i read about that was teddy riley helped produce that song wow. so okay and those of you know teddy riley is popular for dangerous um oh yeah also about the songs that was another thing that i did not like the original scores they did were fine to me mm-hmm some of it got a little too dramatic at some points. Didn't need to be that dramatic. But the part that it, the times that it got terrible was when they introduced characters, like when Joe Jackson came up, or when uh, Romaine Bain, uh, R- R- Romaine Bain came up, and it had like this kind of like just stock, like jazzy sort of funk music when they walk up. It just sounded cheap every single time that they put in one of those terrible stock, you know, music sort of, you know. Uh, like it's like generic music. Ugh, it was just the worst. It's like they could have just completely left that out, and it would have made the movie at least a little bit two better, times better. A little bit. Yeah, because it just sounded very cheap. Just very cheap. Generic, it, it, yeah. yeah, it looked like. I mean, I don't know. That was bad. I always. I just think that most movies should stick with more of a score. You know. Yeah. So you'd agree with that? I do agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as the rest of the movie, yeah, it just sucks that they couldn't license the the, the My Jack catalog. I don't really think that they needed to use Michael Jackson's music in it personally because it was at a point of his life where he was kind of staying away from doing that aspect of his life. He right. was really wanting to get into movies, like they hinted at that a little bit. So I don't think they personally needed to have Michael Jackson's music in it. Uh, but they definitely shouldn't have had anybody's music in it. They should just did with a. To me, personally, I think they should have just did, I had a score. Just a regular, you know, orchestrated score. Yeah. It would have been a lot better. Um, yeah, let's see. But they did have Smile. They had the song Smile that we, had, we kind of talked a little bit about. Um, and that scene, I thought, was super cute. I liked it. I thought it was great. I didn't think he sounded bad singing Smile. Um, I think he sounded good-ish. Uh, and I really thought the scene was cute. And then they used Smile at the end of the movie. Smile, of course, is Michael Jackson's favorite song of all time. Um, what do you think? You know, I didn't really pay attention to that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not, man. Man. Well, no, this <laughs> man hates Navi. <laughs> Navi started singing. And, and then you just zoned out. I zoned out. got on my phone. 
<laughs> and then as soon as I heard the music was done, oh, I was man. like, oh, okay. Dude, no, I love this, though, because it definitely is showing <laughs> the different, the different, the, the things that two MJ fans can take out of this is, is because, God, I thought it was a sweet scene. I thought it was sweet. Man, I, yeah, I thought that scene was cute. Um, you know, and it was, it was a nod to MJ, you know, was MJ's favorite song. I thought it was sweet. I thought it was a sweet scene. I mean, and be I it, be it that it's MJ's favorite song is all, you know, it's all groovy, but yeah, but yeah, you, you could have got to somebody you. else to yeah, sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't uh, sound nothing like Michael. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I guess that's all the songs there. Um, I'm just, we're just going through notes here. It's kind of, we don't really have like a, like a, let's see. What, where are we at? Oh man. We've, we've talked for a minute. All right. So we'll, Try to keep it underneath an hour. I guess it doesn't really matter. It's like we can talk as long as we want to. We can talk as long as we want to. Um, People still listen. Hopefully they will. It's like if they're like, oh, this isn't a scripted episode. He oh, doesn't know what he's talking about, and he likes Navi. Kill the kill Jenkins. <laughs> kill Jenkins. Um, yeah. So yeah, they didn't. Uh, the money issues. That's one of my other notes. They're talking about talking about the money issues. They yeah. didn't elaborate on those, which they really should have. Because yeah, they did. Like like. They were really angry at Michael Jackson. They really were. Like they were just kind of upset at him. I mean, I mean, look at one point. You know, he paid that photographer seventy five thousand dollars to make that go away, mm-hmm. and he couldn't pay his employees. Yeah, and, and like, and they weren't. I don't really remember the the figures from the book. I don't remember. Um, and there's real. I don't think there's a way to even look it up right now. But it it wasn't that much. I I, I want to say. I want to say, man, if I'm guessing, five to ten thousand dollars, you know, is like, right. man, it might not. Nah, it's probably more than that. I don't really know, dude. I really, I really can't say. I don't remember how much they were getting paid, but it wasn't a substantial amount of money. It was enough to where Michael but Jackson. They, they, but they've been working for him for you know two years. Yeah. You know, this is the guy that. Hey, they didn't get plane tickets, so they drove out. Exactly, and and that also to me helps in a way, the legitimacy of their stories, because they were talking about how they did kind of, and so, so they did kind of, you know, break protocol by, by, uh, caring about their employer Mm -hmm. and they weren't getting paid. And so of course they got paid off this book. I don't know how much money. Oh no. I think they actually donated all the money from this book to charity. I think so. So yeah. So they actually, I mean, I don't know how much they got paid from the the lifetime movie either. I'm sure they're making their money. I mean, I'm sure they are. Yeah. But I think at that point, for Bill anyway, it wasn't about the money. Yeah. It was about keeping him safe. Yeah. Because he saw how he was going down that downward spiral. Mm-hmm. He, he, like he was saying in the movie, he saw a guy that really just wanted to be a normal person. Exactly. And like, and he was like, like, literally nobody was looking out for this guy. Because exactly. uh, Michael Jackson, as much as people don't want to believe... Because, yes, he was a very, very smart man, and he made a lot of really good decisions, but he was a childlike person. And I, I saw on Twitter a lot of people like, oh, it's, it's not it's not helping disprove the fact that he was a childlike person. Michael Jackson grew up getting whatever he wanted from the age of nine, you know? He was money. It's like he, just, he, he always had money. He always had everything he wanted, and it's like... It's, when you tell a person like that that they can't have something, they're going to find somebody who can. Exactly. And so... As much as your fans out there don't want to believe that, it's the truth. It's like, so uh-huh. Michael Jackson was very childlike. Yes, he had his adult moments. And that was another thing that they didn't harp on a lot was with that girl in the back. They didn't say her name. And like, uh-huh. there was two girls that he had. And, and the, the book the book elaborates on two girls. There's friend and there's flower. And, that was an, and there's a few things like that that they didn't talk about, which would have helped kind of alleviate some of that, which I guess that, that kind of makes uh, the MJ fans mad as well. Uh, but yeah, there was friend and flower. And one of them, I don't remember which one, but um, when Michael Jackson died, and uh, they, and this is all in the book, they were, um, they wanted to go to his funeral because they were big parts of Michael Jackson's life through those couple of years, um, and they were from across seas. They weren't from the United States, and uh, so they only had Bill and Javon's number, and so they got hold of them, and I think it was Bill that got her a uh seat inside of michael jackson's funeral so people didn't know about these people they, they nobody knew about friend and flower and he didn't he never told anybody the real names because he didn't want anybody to get he didn't want people to bother right. them and so 
so Javon didn't even know their real name or Bill didn't know their real name. And so uh, when they had contacted him, uh, they were just like, yeah, this is friend. Um, you know, when she was, you know, of course she didn't say it like that. She was crying. She was, you know, distraught Hysterical, because Michael yeah. Jackson had died and she couldn't get into the funeral because nobody knew who she was. And, uh, yeah, so he got, he had ended up getting her pass into, into the funeral at Staples Center and they were sitting nosebleeds. Like they were up somewhere, you know, it was like two people that were closest to Michael Jackson during a really short period of time. And I wish that there was a couple of moments like that, that I wish they would have spent more time on. I'd written down another one because uh, they would have really, you know, it, there was moments to where it should have been more heartbreaking to where you felt more for Michael. Like when he when he busted his hand on that camera. Yeah, I felt for him. You know, it's yeah, like I mean, yeah. I felt for him anyway, you know, but I mean, like I, I, I'm also trying to look at it for as general public. You know, at that moment, you kind of feel bad for him because, you know, he's crying. He's saying it's like, you know, you believe me, right? You believe me. I wouldn't touch these kids. Um, the other scene, which was a really big moment for me in that book was when randy jackson came through and busted through the uh gate and um i i've never like since i read that if i ever see randy jackson in person <laughs> i mean if i i think i've said this before in the podcast if i ever see that part that dude in, in in person it's on i mean i i will train and i will destroy that man because like because but again that that scene should have been more heartbreaking because I think I should have too. When in the book, it made it seem like it ruined. I mean, because Michael Jackson, in in the book, it led up to a point to where Michael Jackson was just really wanting to get out. Like he 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 was really in a bad place. He was not feeling good. As like everything, it, he was really depressed. He wasn't feeling good at all. And then Elizabeth Taylor invited him to mm-hmm. the birthday party, and then he finally started perking up. Like he was finally getting in a good mood. He was feeling good about life. And then Randy Jackson just destroyed it. Destroyed it all. Yeah. And like the book makes it like builds it up to this point to where Michael Jackson's just a, like low. He's so low. And then finally, he finally gets a break and then Randy destroys it. He just destroys it. And um, yeah, they should have, they should have played that up a bit more. They kind of made Michael seem more level headed about it. But in the book, it seems like he was just distraught. Like he wouldn't leave his room. He was in his room for days. It was like, it was, it was a really bad point for him. And, uh, and Randy ruined that one night that he had. And to me, the movie made me hate him even more just because I knew it was going on in the book. And the movie just made me, I was like, what is wrong with this dude? I was like, what is wrong with you as a person? Yeah, so. I mean, like, who rams somebody's gate? Idiot. And yeah, it's like Randy managed him for a short period. And yeah, Michael Jackson might have owed him some money because Michael Jackson owed a lot of people some money. Uh, but again, they didn't elaborate on that. They didn't, right. they didn't let the audience know that Michael Jackson owed people so much money. Anyway, uh, but yeah, there was there were some scenes like that where I, f- I, I think they could have tugged at the heartstrings a little bit more and just didn't. I liked the part where he's at the, the Casios uh-huh. and they're actually treating him like a real person. Yeah. I think they could have, you know, went on that for a little bit longer. They could have. And, and, and But that's another one that they could have, you know, th- there's a book by Frank Casio called My Friend Michael and... Uh, that one, man, it humanizes Michael a lot. Um, and again, it's one of those to where you like, how much is true? How much is, you know, Frank Cassio, you know, telling, you know, no stories, elaborating, you know. So, but the, and that's one thing that they didn't put. They didn't put Frank or Eddie Cassio. Now, I'm sure you know who those people are, right? Yeah. Eddie Cassio is the one that said that or they have the Cassio tracks to where they said that Michael Jackson, um, you know, was supposedly sang these songs and. It's not him. It's not Michael. It's right. it's a it's a impersonator. Um, but yeah, they didn't put. I, I like how they put Dom Dominique and jeez, uh, I forget her name. Marion Cassio. I don't. That's probably so wrong. <laughs> I forget. I know it's. I know it's Dom Dominique is the dad. Um, but uh, yeah, they put them in there, and they you know they did they did show a little bit of humanizing. But yeah, w- when Michael Jackson would go to the Cassio's house. It was, you know, like that was the only place he could feel normal. Like he would always go over there and like hang out and like, cause you know, they lived in a nicer neighborhood in New Jersey. So no, really, nobody ever really paid too much attention. Um, and he had a little place down in the bottom where they built him a little, you know, recording studio and dance, you know, floor. And he would sleep down there and he loved going there. But yeah, it's, it's just, I guess, I guess I'm harping on a lot of things where they, they should have elaborated more. Like they, they should have, they should have. Yeah. It's it becoming a, a recurring theme. Director's fault. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, it, but it also comes down to writing and editing. You know, it's like the director, I think, did an okay job as far as you know, like th- that one's that person's putting a camera. I mean, that's also the director of photography, but exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, the director put Navi in it. <laughs> that's where she messed up, and that's where yeah, that's where it starts in your book there. Um, but yeah, like there's like there's scenes I was thinking like they didn't need that day that, that Vegas blanket dancing. I didn't no. think they needed that. Uh, didn't need the, yeah that chicken that chicken fight scene where they're like fighting with the girl you know with the big uh, <laughs> talking about pay for that water it's like I don't think yeah. that was a scene they needed no, no. Um, the Xmas shopping you know it's like it kind of you know showed that he didn't have money but I think there was a better way to show that it's I mean they spent so much time him going oh yeah I want that oh yeah I want that I want that yeah could we get that one and like I mean that was a long scene see that see that voice yeah was that good that was, was that good, a- that was good. <laughs> Navi didn't have that. <laughs> What we'll do is that I'll just go and I'll um, voice over the entire movie. And then send it to me. Yeah. And and that then, way I can actually listen yeah, to it. Yeah, then you can enjoy the movie. It's <laughs> a great idea. Uh, but yeah, that was a, yeah, that was a scene I just I didn't think that they that they needed. I mean, they could have condensed it some to, f- to flesh out other parts that meant more, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's another note that I had. It was plagued by the same problems as any other movie is going to have any Michael Jackson movie. It's not going to be enough time. The pacing is just, it's hard to, it's hard to, to get those down. Um, I mean, but lifetime did the Jackson's American did they, dream. No, no, it's VH1. that did that. No, I, I think it was lifetime. It's VH1. It's 100% VH1. <laughs> VH1 did the Jackson American think, dream. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah. You're right. I think you're right. <laughs> um, damn, that's one check for me. <laughs> But yeah, the book, it hit book bullet points, but it skipped too much. I mean, I guess we can agree with that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we'll, have to, we'll have to do this again, like in a, in a shorter segment, Oops. after you read the book. I, I, yeah, I got to read the book. You got the book? Yeah, yeah. I'll let you, no, no, I forgot. I read it on my phone. No. Yeah, I, I downloaded it on my phone. Well, then just send it to me. Okay. Well, actually, can I do that? You got an iPhone? I got an iPhone. I'm that is true. Can. Yeah, I think I can then. Um, but yeah, I think that's... All the notes I have. I mean, I have man, a couple no, more questions listen. for you. Yeah, man, listen. Yeah. I did not like how they didn't put Conrad in there. More. They did? Oh, They well. put him in that, that one time. <sighs> I was looking for more. I was, I'm, I'm kind of interested because I remember from two different instances of how Michael Jackson got Conrad into his services. I don't remember if that's the actual way that they met was Paris, Paris Jackson sick. being sick. I could be completely wrong, but I also could be completely right. 50-50. I, I don't was, know. I was looking for more interaction. I mean, these these are the two bodyguards that's been with him for the, you know, the last two years of Michael Jackson's life. No, no. He wasn't, he, they weren't there for the last two years of his life. They were there from 2006 to 2000, no, 2005 to 2007. Yeah, they were only there for two years, and then they, they skipped two years, and then they were supposed to come back for 2009, and then he passed away. So, it's because of that damn Amir yeah. company. Yeah, a, 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 why can't I remember? AEG, yeah. AEG. Was it the AEG people? Yeah, that were doing 2000, in 2009? Yeah, it was no, AEG. I'm, 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 no, I'm talking about that, that, that security company. Oh, you're talking about the... Um, Amir. Yeah, That's yeah. That's his name. I, uh, I wrote it down. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah. I was mad at that point yeah. because they brought in the new security company mm-hmm. who allowed Conrad to be in there by himself. Was he Con- uh, Conrad was hired by AEG. Well, yeah, yeah, he was hired by AEG, but yeah, that right. if Amir Yeah, which is the- if their company didn't keep a closer eye just like Bill said, mm-hmm. if they were there, they would have drove Michael to the hospital themselves. That's true. Very true. And yeah, Conrad, we all know Conrad is a terrible, terrible person. Terrible. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm just I not sure that that's exactly exactly how they met. Again, I don't remember. I, I've read the book book like, I mean, it was almost four years ago now. Yeah, almost four years ago. So I, I've only read it once. So I, I don't retain all that information. Plus, you know, other books say alternative, you know, facts. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, his hearsay. Yeah, but yeah, they 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 only were his bodyguards for two years after the trial, and then there was a tour. I think it was like a two year, two or three year period where they 
weren't bodyguards for him because those people had pushed him out. Yeah. Um, but they still tried. They still tried to be there. Yeah, and Michael and, and and what they said, you know, at the end is, you know, as much as we know, it's true that Michael wanted them back. You know, and I'm sure from from every single thing that most most of the most of the stories can say is that he had just way too many people, you know, yeah. telling him or you know, in in and out of his life at those points. Man, it's like if you ever go through that MJ Inc. Dear Jesus, it's like just the the amount of people that were just like that that all thought that they had his ear, all thought that they were part of his life at that point. It was ridiculous, yeah. and it was just it, it, and so it's easy for everybody to get because everybody will tell you that they all felt that Michael Jackson thought they were spe- like they they thought that they were Michael's closest person. They're but like that's, you were- that's how Michael Jackson treated everybody though. Mm-hmm. Very true. Yep. I mean, he met you, and you were the most wonderful person in the world. Oh, yeah. He made everybody feel special, and so everybody felt like they were his best friend. I met him in 1986. Oh, that's right. You have. Yes. Oh, wait. Let's go, my, go ahead and tell that story. Okay, I forgot n- that you did that. Yes. 1986, my sister, Maria, was in the hospital because she swallowed a handful of change. Oh, geez. I mean, like... A handful, and this is back in the eighties. Uh-huh. Everybody's doing coke. Change was nasty, even worse than it is now. I, I believe it. It was horrible. And so I'm going to the hospital to visit her with my grandmother. Now at this point, I get in the elevator. Uh, we stop on the second floor. Doors open. This man walks in. Two bodyguards. D- don't rush us out or anything. I look up and it's Michael Jackson. Now, how old are you at this time? At this time, I was six or seven. Six or seven, okay. I freak out. <laughs> well, granted, know, yeah. You know I mean, I mean, like at this point, you know, I I know Michael Jackson. You know, I've been listening to his music for you know, like at least three years of my life. Yeah. And so when I see Michael Jackson, and you know, and he shakes my hand, you know, and picks me up. You know, I'm a little chunky fat boy. <laughs> I think it's I think probably one of his bodyguards had to help, help him, you know, yeah. hoist me up. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and so we get to our floor and my grandmother's trying to rush me out. And this whole time I'm crying. I'm like, no, Michael Jackson, I don't go Michael Jackson. Yeah. And he just kind of did one of those. Where he kisses his hand and yeah. waves by, huh? So, and, but he was he was there visiting the um, the burn relief floor at yeah. that time. Was what? Do you know like what were the circumstances he was there for? Was I mean aside from meeting with the children, was he there like on tour or? Uh, he played in Tulsa, I believe, that year. Oh, okay. And so he was here on tour. Okay, so he's doing like a show. He's doing a show, and then he had to stop because I remember my father's one of my father's friends went to the show, caught the Billy Jean hat, mm-hmm. and gave it to me. Really? Yeah. Huh. But I was six years old, and it's lost. Yeah. I kicked myself in the ass. <laughs> well, I still. I mean, it's not the it's not the Billy Jean hat, but I still wish that I had my dangerous tape from. When I first uh, got it, but eh, you know, I mean, not quite the Billie Jean hat. I know? still, I still got Thriller that was released on Epic Records in mint condition and vinyl. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you where I live now, <laughs> cause it'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess we can go and wrap it up. Well, I mean, let's see what 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 are your your final thoughts? Oh, uh, one last note, cause we were talking about. Well, I guess not one last note. A couple more notes. But we're talking about Michael Jackson portraying him. Uh, people people, people portraying him. Um, portraying, not betraying. Sorry, I said that wrong. Yeah, you kind of confused me. Then. Yeah, I was like, well, who's, who's betraying Michael Jackson? Everybody? <laughs> Listen, man. This is how much I love Michael. Mm-hmm. When I was, I was locked up for a little bit. Mm-hmm. People would, you know, make the child molesting jokes oh, yeah. to me. And I got my pinky broke because I got fought. I fought one of them. <laughs> I I always have to like whenever somebody says something like that, like the jokes. Normally, I'm just because you just can't get away from the jokes. The jokes, I'm just kind of like, haha, yeah, whatever, dude. And, but you know, when somebody's like, no, nah, man, but what about them kids though? It's like that's when I'm like, listen, 
here. Uh. You but, see, I'm, I'm, I'm the type that, you know, somebody starts off a joke, Michael Jackson, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, nope, either you shut up and walk away mm-hmm. or you can tell a joke and get punched. <laughs> I like that. I like that approach. Yeah. But I, as far as the Michael Jackson, people who played Michael Jackson. Right. My favorite is Wiley Draper. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, he did he did uh from the Jacksons. Yes. Dude. It's like I, I just think to me is like he, he embodied it. Yeah. He learned the moves. It's like he had the well, you know, the eighty the eighty four, eighty I mean eighty one, eighty two mannerisms. You well, know he had the voice. He had the well, voice down. He didn't he didn't sing. He didn't sing that was all that was all Michael Jackson in that movie. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Wiley Draper didn't. No. See. I'm. I'm not, no. I'm. I'm talking about like when he's. Oh, was when he's talking. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, I wasn't seeing him singing. Yeah. You're talking about when he's talking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, you're right. I. I. To me, right now, I think he's still the best person that's done it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I wrote this down. How do you think? Do you, Do you think that MJ could ever be presented correctly in movie form? Like, if somebody was, I mean. If they were do if they were to do a Michael Jackson movie, another one. I mean, one that that chronicled. I mean, it's just it just seems impossible. Every, everything everything from beginning to end. Beginning to end. Yeah, I mean, first off, you're looking at a 15 hour movie. I'd watch it. Oh, me too. But do you, do you think that it can be done right? And if it can be done right, how can it be done? It can be done right if the directors and the writers of an American Dream sat down. And did it because they did that movie to a T. Yeah, love that movie. Mm-hmm. So they would have to sit down, write the script, get get the same characters, and then that would be it. It would it would it would definitely have to be a few parter. And I, it couldn't the, the 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 story can't be told in three hours. It can't be told. No, in four no, hours. no. It's it's gonna it's gonna be. They're gonna have to cut it up like they did Star Wars. And they're gonna do it like Lord of the Rings. It's gonna have to be, oh, you know. No, you didn't. <laughs> and they're gonna have to. We're they're not go- friends anymore. No, I don't like Lord of the Rings. Okay, okay yeah. Okay. No, I'm not. A, I'm not a Lord of the Rings fan. I'm just yeah. saying it's like Lord of the Rings is like a six-hour movie. Yeah, it's like each. it's like it's like three six-hour eight eighteen-hour movies. You know, um, but I think that's the only way they're gonna be able to do it. And I and 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 I truly believe, and this is just my opinion. The only way they're going to be able to do Michael Jackson right, give it, I, I say give it 15 to 25 years CG. There's the only way they're going to be able to do his face. They've already did that. Coachella. Did you not, did you not no, no, hear no, no, about no. that? No. I'm talking about, I'm t- who are you talking about? Who, you're talking about. Uh, they did Michael Jackson. Well, no, they've done Michael Jackson in CG. I'm talking about doing it right. It's like, because like right now, it's like the, your best CG people you're looking at, uh, spoiler alert for Star Wars Rogue One. Uh, Princess Leia, and then also, um, you know, the Chancellor, whatever his name is. I those are the those are the only two where you know the CG is pretty decent. You know, I mean, even Tron, you're going back to Jeff Bridges, you know, doesn't yeah. look that great. You know, uh, in order for it to be nice, realistic, and also affordable enough for them to do a uh, six hour, you know, trilogy. I think the only way they can do Michael Jackson is CG twenty years from now. So assuming you've been conscious at some point. What is this? Hold on, I'm, it's, it's it's Michael Jackson at the Billboard. It's a, it's oh no, a, I've seen this. The, the hologram? Oh yeah, I've seen the hologram. You know, I've seen the hologram. I, I I'm a fan of the hologram. Most people don't that's like the hologram. I'd love it. Yeah, but yeah, that's uh that's Ernest that does that one. Um, I didn't like his dancing, but I thought the face looked decent-ish. But I think another, another. I mean, you're looking at a. I mean, that's a that's a four minute, you know, flick. No. You're talking about like a, you know, CG's expensive. I'm talking about like a six hour movie, you know, to where you're gonna have to do. I mean, you could probably get away with someone, you know, someone for, uh, you know, the first part of his life, maybe even into thriller. But once you get start bad, you know, it's like once yeah. you get into dangerous and beyond. You're gonna need CG, and that's just my oh, opinion. Yeah. And I think that I don't think it can be done now, but I do think in the next 15, 20 years, it could be done. That's I just, think so that's too. My, that's I, my mean, I mean, George Lucas, where are you at? Oh, George he'll be he'll Lucas. be dead by then. 
but no, I don't think so. Uh, Industrial Light and Magic will still be around. So, you know, I don't Disney know. will buy it all up. So, yeah. you know, they're going to have to uh, Michael Jackson's going to have to be a mixture of CG, a, uh, you know, a body double, a couple, you know, a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. And somebody's going to be training. I mean, the, 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 you have got to train for years for that, you know, in order to keep it, you know, keep it solid. Uh, and then, you know, a voice actor, you know, so you can have to have voiceover CG and, you know, body doubles. That's the only way that Michael Jackson can be done correctly. If even that, and still people are going to complain about it like they did on Twitter all night tonight. I can't believe there was just nobody that had any redeeming things to say about it. There was a couple of people I saw on there like, oh my God, this makes me so sad. But all in all is everybody just hating on it. And so I don't know, I guess closing up, I didn't think it was that bad of a movie. I enjoyed it. I will watch it again. Um, Uh, no, I mean, like, look, dude. If they bring, if they make that movie. They gotta bring back Jason Weaver. Who? Jason Weaver. Who? Which one was he? He played Michael Jackson. And which one? American Dream. Jason? Huh? So let me see. Let me see which one you're talking about. Jason Weaver. Yeah, you see him. He was little Michael. Yeah, but you can't get Big Michael now. Big Michael's probably like too old. No, no. That, that. Listen, listen, dude. He could still play. I don't think so. Listen, he play that. teenage Michael. No, he's like he's like at least thirty something now. Come on. No way. Yes. No, yeah. no, not yes. at all. The 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 well the only <laughs> the only like the only people that are gonna be able to play Michael Jackson now are people we've never heard of. It's like it's gonna be somebody we've never heard of. It's gonna be Jenkins. No, it's not gonna be me. <laughs> 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 I could probably I could probably change the skin tones a little bit, you know. It's like I could probably get a little lighter and then maybe get a little darker. Yeah, yeah. But no, I can't dance and I'm too tall. So <laughs> <laughs> he was. I don't know. He was. He was five ten. I'm six yeah. three. So Uh-oh. all right. It's computer genetics. It, it, it's gonna have to be. It's gonna have to be body double, voiceover, and CG on the face. Yeah. It's like that's the only way that we're getting Michael in a in a new movie. In in my opinion, I don't know. Okay. All right. So. So as it comes down, we got the we got the Navi hater yeah. over here, Fern. Anti Navi. Anti Navi. And then uh me, I I think the Navi lover. Yeah. Over there. I, I you know, I don't I don't I don't hate him. I don't hate him. I think it was one of the better Michaels, but um yeah, they could you know. they could have did a lot better on the makeup too. I, mean, I don't his, I think his, it was good. His chin was too square. <sighs> I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm not. I that mean, somebody out there agree with me. Oh no, mo- I think most of the people are gonna agree. Most with you. of your listeners, are yeah, gonna they're gonna be like, "Nah, he was right." So yeah, hashtag, hashtag Fern was right, or hashtag uh, Jenkins, um, Jenkins is. I don't know. I was, gonna, I was trying to think of something clever, but I couldn't. Uh, hashtag Fern was right, or hashtag uh, Jenkins uh, might know what he's talking about. It's kind of a long hashtag. Doesn't matter because none of you are going to hashtag it anyway. So <laughs> it's going to be nothing but Fern was right. Yeah, it's going to be all Fern was right. Okay, so uh, I guess you know closing. Do you have any like long winded statements like I do most of this podcast to talk about it? No. Nope. All right. <laughs> I will just say that all in all, I thought it was a halfway decent movie. I'm not mad at it. Um, I I don't I don't understand what all the hate is for it because I don't think it was that terrible a movie. But it, but again. It comes back from the fact that I kind of knew the book, so um, I kind of can patch in little pieces. Um, but you know, it's just all in, it's, you know. You're not gonna get. You just can't. You're not gonna get a great MJ movie. You just. I mean, if they would have found a better impersonator. I'm uh. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, I, I think that's it. That's it. That's all we're gonna that's talk it. about. Yeah. All uh, right. I will keep yakking on about some other stuff, <laughs> but I will have you back on for another episode to where we can, you know, do something, you know, that maybe, you know, just MJ talk. Maybe we'll hit, right. hit a couple M- MJ news articles or something. But don't worry, fans. I won't do this too often because I know they, I know they like the scripted episodes. So uh, next episode will be a scripted episode, and we'll finish up the uh, Paul McCartney ATV catalog episode. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be really upset that this is not that episode. They're going to be like, oh, been waiting for that for a month. <laughs> hey, guys, it takes time to get these things ready. Plus, I've been extremely busy um, with the move and moving all this. to a hot house. Oh, my God. This 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 
heat box. I'm gonna have to go home and take a shower, dude. So, I, I haven't know. taken a shower in like two days from all the stupid moving. I knew I smelled something. Exactly. It might be Margarita because Margarita's losing his mind over there. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you guys for listening to this episode. Uh, please let us know what you think about this movie. I am excited to hear what the fans think, even though I know that it's going to be overwhelming negative, be- overwhelmingly negative because. That's how most of you MJ fans act. You're crazy sometimes. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like we should just be happy that things are being made. But then on the other hand, it's like... I mean, they're making these movies for the next generation. Yeah. I mean... They're, well, they're, they're making these movies for their profit. And I get well, that. Yes, but they'll be around. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's, it's a difficult... T- it's a difficult thing to think about because for one i want to see mj material but two i want it to be good and 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 i don't and i I want i want people to really like it and on this one it's like while i like it a lot of people don't so it's so it's overly negative and so it's bad it's like it's in the overall in in the overall scheme of things this is bad for michael jackson which is it tears me apart because i don't think it's that terrible so whatever um but anyway just people go back to watch the American Dream. That's yeah, just it. yeah. I mean, that's true. Just go watch the American Dream. It's five hours long, but um, but it's, it's great. It, it's really good. Um, but yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. We do appreciate you listening to Moonwalk Talks again. If you want to check us out, it's moonwalktalks.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Moonwalk Talks. And do you know what the ending is? No. Oh, okay. The ending is, don't forget to smile.